Hi, Brett. You want to have a room? Let's do a room. You want to green a room Let's up? make it green. Hi, everybody. Hey. It is uh, a week until Halloween. Yes. Hollows Dween. Yes. And it... Uh, <laughs> that's funny. We... Where we, did we talk? Had we had we talked about Halloween on the show? That was a bit on the show, right? Where like, where we it kept coming up that like Halloween is on a Tuesday. Yes, we should like come up with a plan to do something for Halloween. On yes, <laughs> because it I I had to like keep myself from not laughing during our production meeting. Anytime it comes back up, I was like, should we? We should do something for Halloween. We should. Do, what do you want to do? Well, let's do something for Halloween. Mm. Hey, let's just do something for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it is so uh, I have three friends that it's their favorite holiday. Yeah? Yeah, three of my friends. Name them. Uh Jessica Calvello. Okay. Absolutely mm-hmm. loves uh our friend Jamie uh Kay, who's okay. a great artist and uh and friend who I call Jamie. Mm. Uh and uh mm-hmm. who else? And a third person to be named later. Wow. I wouldn't know them. They live in Canada. Yep. <laughs> they go to you don't know. School. They're cool. You, you met Jessica before. Yes, she's come to the show twice. Yeah, I've, I have no, I have no qualms against against any of the people in your life, Brett. Good, thank you. Really, I, I let's so. go with this. Let's 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 discuss that a little bit. Really, okay. Do Should I have ha- qualms with? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Oh, you. okay. Do you have qualms with friends in my life? I just told you no. <laughs> I think I just told you. I'm sure. sorry. Did I no, just tell you no? I mean, no? you may say that, but we, that was a little bit of an offer. Almost like, really? Do you really? There's no one in my life that you might have a qualm with. I, if, if they're a friend of yours, they're a friend of mine. They're, well, that's fantastic. You know, I mean, I don't know who you like and don't like. Who specifically like and like just enough to be in the, the stable of what sure. we're talking about. True. True. Because mm-hmm. I do have a few friends that come. Come and go? Yeah. Uh, no, come to the show. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's Doug, Reed, uh, Jessica's come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and I think they're all great. Yep. They're all wonderful people by association. I don't know. Doug, Doug is not that great. You know what? I wasn't going to say anything. I, was, I, I mean, know, I he's my best friend, but come on. Mm. Come on. Come on, Doug. Yeah. Or Douglas? I don't know. Uh, Brett, we we were talking last week about gambling. Yes, a little bit. Uh, we just had a modern rogue video come up last week about uh, how to count cards. Oh, how to count cards for blackjack. Do you do you are you familiar with counting cards? I do under I have watched Rain Man, so <laughs> okay, yes. okay. Yeah. I do know what counting cards is. Okay, there you go. Then uh, that was all the wind in my sails on that topic. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out, Modern Rogue. Yeah, right. go to it. Uh, uh, yeah, they, we we were talking on Court Killers yesterday about the Billboard Music Awards. Okay. Uh, apparently, for this year, they are teaming up with Spotify and just streaming the whole thing on their website. Hmm. They're not going. They've done it on TV before. It's been on ABC, NBC, and Fox, but this year. Website. What was, on website? What, 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 what was the? Let's do it on social media. What What was the decision? Why did they make that decision? I think part of it is that it is like a lesser tier of a of an award show. I would say. Okay. I mean, it's up there. We're talking about it, but it's not an Oscar. It's not an Academy Award. Right. Um. So I think between that and they're doing this, they made it sound like they're gonna go back and forth between some sort of remote studio, some sort of specified studio, and then two other satellite stages for shows. Like they are hinting, I, I don't know if they're hinting or if it's a real thing, but but uh, I guess uh, one Taylor Swift oh. is doing a show that I've, night. I've heard, of, I've heard of him. Yeah. Uh, he, he and his whole band, his whole crew are doing mm. a thing in Rio, Brazil, somewhere in Brazil that night. And so the idea is that they will that the Billboard Awards may like patch in to that concert. That would or be pretty amazing. More likely, well, I guess I don't know what the time is, but if I was setting it up, I would do some amount of time de- of tape delay. Yeah. Of like, because that's what they do in the Grammys and a bunch of uh, any other time you see like a live concert on TV. You do not want to do that live. It's not live, and it's no. usually not live. Yeah. Um. It's like as live. 
But that'll be. Um, oh, and Scooper Nova Girl says so Taylor Swift could receive an award during a concert. Which is very possible. Yeah. Kind of an Amy Winehouse sort of thing. That would be very good. Yeah. That's and, a big moment, I feel like. And then her her oh fans. My God. You know, I got a Taylor Swift album the other day. Oh, really? You found one of them. I, I, I friend, found one of them, like the a Dragon A friend Balls. of mine gave me a bunch of her records. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one was, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> uh, 19... 89. 89. It was not uh, the, the folk one. Okay. Is that uh, red? It, uh, no, it was not red. It was not red. Uh, um, it, it, and it was... Uh, love Again. It, like Revolution? Could that, is that one? Love, love Songs. No. Secret. No. Next Level. I'm sorry. I realize now that I should have remembered the name of the... But it was definitely her on the album. I have not mm. listened to it yet. Yeah. Uh, it was given to me <laughs> along with... Reputation? The one where it's like black and white. and I think that's what yeah. it is. It kind, of, it kind of looks like it should be like a Death Grips album cover, but yes. it's, it's just fucking Taylor Swift. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah it, was, uh, it was Reputation. Yeah. And uh, along mm. came with it, I got the to... box set of Garth Brooks. Of course. Uh, album box set. And I was like, hey, something I never thought I would own. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I got, a, I got a question for you. A question for you, because what the fuck are you going to do with a Taylor Swift disc? No, uh, uh, vinyl. Oh, a vinyl. Oh, yeah, okay. This, okay, this okay, is all okay. vinyl. Gotcha. Okay. I'll you know put what? it right makes, next to my, sense. I'll put it right next to my Cosby comedy album. Yeah. I'll put oh, them. Of course. Right. <laughs> yeah. I because uh, uh, that is that is a very strange thing of physical media, modern physical media. Mm -hmm. Like vinyl and cassette are doing well as like niche uh, merchandise yeah. uh, products, but like uh, Best Buy, uh, mm -hmm. this was in the news. Uh, and did you see this? Did you hear about this? I did. They're gonna stop selling DVD and Blu-rays of movies and TV. Yep. They'll still keep selling games mm -hmm. because that's because people trade them in, and so there's just fucking double margin there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's going to be, you'll have to go to Walmart or Target, apparently. Uh, and those will probably always stick around a little bit. Yeah. Because it's not like those are huge entertainment sections. Yeah. Like their DVDs and stuff is an aisle, but it's Target, not electronics. Yeah. Big box. Store. I definitely have my opinions when it comes to physical media because... I'd love to hear some of them right now. Yes. Here it comes. Well, you've been to my house, so you've seen my CD collection, mm -hmm. a pretty ex fairly extensive CD collection. I'm imagining a shape inside of your studio that probably had all the, yeah. The if you're looking at the desk, that, I yeah, had. I'm imagining the blobs here. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's a window. I did drug you. That's true. There was like a, <laughs> gr there was like a red blob on the right side. Yeah. That's where I sat. And you sat in like your like a black blob. Yeah, my it, uh, shaded against the window. And then was that? And then there was. Is that a poster of Pinochet? No, I think I'm kind of. No, there was up. Uh, uh, it was a uh, Picasso. Oh, I get I get them mixed up. Yep. So uh, so what are you going to do with these CDs? Do you have a CD player? I, or no, you don't. know. this is on the whole thing. You have you have physical media. I have physical media. I have when players. Do you, you do. What I do is I then rip them and put them on my network storage. You're a Plex guy. Uh, yes. Flex guy. Well, because okay. Okay. the idea is I want to own this media because uh, we've seen in Spotify mm -hmm. uh, many different places you can, those can just go away. Absolutely. Even even if you buy them, sometimes they can still just go away. That is much more rare, but yes, that's also possible. that's what happened with me with e music. Okay. Well, well, and and granted, like. That was more of a danger back then. I think, in general, digital media ownership is historically sturdy, I would yes. say. At yes. this point, we can say it is generally historic. Like, the times when people have bought something and it was fucking ripped away from them have been big to-dos and very, very small. Yeah. So, I, I think, in general, we could look at digital media ownership and say it's fine for most yeah. people, I think. But I understand, like, wanting to own... A, th a thing like I uh, <laughs> I wanted to get uh, a digital copy of, of uh, everything everywhere all at once yes I own it <laughs> and 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 I thought well you know it would be good to get the blu-ray because 
I don't have a lot of Blu-rays. This right. is a good movie. It's contemporary. Yes. Um, and so I, I got it. I got one specifically that had like a digital copy. Mm -hmm. You know, that way at least like I don't. You You're know, not using the media. I don't need to put it in my PlayStation. Right. Because that would be the only fucking thing I could do. Like even my 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 desktop computer. I've told this like has a disc tray that I think does is not connected. Oh, okay. It turns <laughs> on and it opens. Sure. But I am now thinking back, and I don't think I've ever put a disc in there where I didn't immediately go, "Is this disc drive not even fucking working?" <laughs> and then I walk away. And then it's stuck in there. Well, it's not stuck at all. It, it perfectly opens and closes. Oh, okay. It, it just it isn't connected in it just, to anything. I, I, something. something. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, uh, but I don't, I don't like using the PlayStation for like DVDs and stuff. Mm. Um, I just, like, Blu-rays Blu and DVDs are like really slow to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Is that like, I, I don't know. Once you put it in, you start watching it, you're fine. But I know I've, I have it, like concert DVDs and they're kind of annoying to use the blu-ray player uh, uh with the with the uh, playstation 4 mm -hmm. uh we have noticed because we've been what once once mad about you dropped off of wherever it was mm -hmm. we went ahead and got the dvds oh, and okay. we've been going through and watching the show yeah amazing show by the way are you how, how much of like uh -huh. Uh, this is not the historical is not the right word for it. How much like previous media are you spending your time on, on like, let's say in the week, right? How much of your time is on like previous media or media that you've seen before versus new things? I'm watching a new thing, because I I I think that would be really interesting to think about. Uh, for me, it's uh, I'm about thirty percent repeat media uh -huh. and seventy percent trying to find something new. Always trying to find something new. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. I, I, I can I feel like I, I feel like I'm I'm in a similar thing. I think that's probably why YouTube has really got its hooks in me and the, mm -hmm. all the body cam stuff has got its hooks in me right now mm -hmm. because they're all the same and they're all pretty good. I, I'm and there's a lot of I'm I'm been falling down those real the you know, YouTube real holes or or Facebook yeah. reels. To where I'm, I realize it's two hours later. You're swiping. You're, you got swiping disease. <sighs> and it's like, this isn't even good. Oh, really? You yeah. should be having fun with it. That's the thing about the getting caught in the swiping is, uh, is you should be having, you should be enjoying yourself. Yes. Generally. Yes. But, uh, but it is easy to get addicted and like. I'm, I'm doing my best to try to reprogram what's coming up to where. Hey, you mm -hmm. know, the whole thing about the bully stuff that I talked about. Right. And more who's line. As much who's line sure. as can roll, I am happy with that. Yeah. And I, and once it learns, like, oh, he'll just watch TV clips. Yeah. You're going to you're gonna get a lot of it. Sure. You know, um, which I guess is, like, not the worst thing in the world, right? Adapt right. to what people respond to. Yeah. But, um I, I but I still hate careful. that I hate that a thing is noticing my habits and starts program. It, it's it's so weird to me. Yeah. I mean, and here I am, former uh, radio DJ guy who based my whole show on figuring out what everybody likes and then trying to play more than that. But for myself, it's different because for me, it's like okay, now you see some of the stuff I like. Now throw some stuff in there that you maybe that I may not have ever heard of before. That's mm -hmm. what I want, mm -hmm. and I just I don't think that that's happening now. Of going, no, let's go wild and try something. Mm. I do think that is something that um, a lot of the AI things right now haven't. We we don't have like a good um, like f formula for making an AI be creative or think more out of the box right i guess it it's good at lateral thinking in ways that we know about right right it's the 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 surgeon is the is his, is his mother like this is fucking riddles and shit it knows riddles and shit supernova girl is jacques z whipper yes he shows up a lot too Ren Fair, he's a Ren Fair guy who. Uh, You're gonna need to go back to square one on Jacques Jacques Z, Z Whipper because I know who that is, and I know that the one sentence you, you, th this man needs a whole description. He needs like a whole stanza. <laughs> can you, can you just take a second to describe then let everyone know Jacques Z Whipper? Yes. So uh, Jacques, 
<laughs> is a handsome young man with a fantastic mustache, mm-hmm. probably drawn on. Uh, <laughs> but it's still fantastic. Okay. So, yeah, uh, he, he looks like a character. You got to be careful. He could listen he, to this. He feels like a character straight out of uh, Beauty and the Beast. Like he's the side character from Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's uh, the hunter. He kind of looks like the hunter. A little if, bit. If the hunter was like he's not wiry. Gaston. He's like a wiry Gaston. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, he uh-huh. has whips, and uh-huh. he he throws the whips, and he'll sing songs connected to the whips, and so he'll take. I'm sorry. Hold on. He'll take audience. Uh, 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 suggestions, and then he'll so make like, songs using the whips. Like, do they have to be whip songs? Like, no. He does, you got to get a lot of whip it. No. You know, but I mean, he'll he gets a lot of Gangnam style. Yeah. yeah. Really. A little bit of everything. Oh, okay. And uh, it's always fun. What is? Is there like a viral like hit? Hit. Ha, ha, hit. Is there <laughs> like a a big? What was? What's? Is he got a hit? Has he got a hit? Was his hit kid? I mean, it's really more of his bit that's the hit instead of just but like, was a there, specific was song. There one viral video that you know of that like blew him up. He did Bad Romance. He did a whip oh. version of Bad Romance that was pretty funny. Okay, but he's funny. He's quite quite witty, and 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 it looks like it's at a Renaissance Festival type situation. Yeah, he um, he looks like one of those guys. Yeah, he looks like one of those guys. Doesn't he? One of those guys. Um. But yeah, he's cool. I uh, I don't always hear it, the the whip and the music. And you know, I try I try, I, I, but I, I've seen him pop up a few times. For it's not exactly my not exactly my tempo. Yeah, you know. But um, uh, it's orange whip. He yes, can do orange. Whip. He whip my hair back and forth. Yep. 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 Whip. yep. Um. In any case. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. That's. I I saw something. Where did I see this? About um, how because because users are being constantly funneled into like creator roles mm-hmm. that um, I think the term was uh, uh, out niching or up niching up niching where uh, th- 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 concepts become so cringe at such a fast rate that people are like finding new unique but marketable ways to be weird and quirky and they have to keep becoming more and more uh more layers more coats of strangeness on the outside sure to get it you you know what i'm saying like yeah uh you immediately have to escalate you as soon as you establish you're immediately escalating to become more to to keep the eyes on you, right? It's there's there's some of that, yeah, but it's it's I think a level of scale of granularity. Okay. It, it, to be the weird kid, to be the weird person now, you need to be weirder than you needed to be weird a uh, decade ago. Yeah. Back in my day. <laughs> we my day, Back we in my day, we, we didn't have to be this weird. Sure, like like using a computer like would Was have been weird. a very like unusual niche thing, mm-hmm. and now computing is its own kingdom of niches, right? Yeah. Yep. Software, hardware, specific networking. phone. Now you phone, can be weird mobile. because look, I've got a flip phone. God, that guy's so weird. What the heck? so weird? And and so um. I I wonder what happens with that. Not not like in terms of are, are people just going to get too weird because I don't think that that's what it is. But I think it's that people have to f- become weird at a level of granularity. Yeah. Like I when I was in high school liked J-pop. I really liked it, and so that was kind of a weird thing about me. Um, and now, you know, uh, we with the internet like. K-pop and J-pop are very are very common. Are incredibly common. Liking K-pop is incredibly mainstream. Yeah. Um, you know what's so, really funny? Yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that there was a fella that really liked the band Genesis. Okay. And yeah. we're not talking Peter. Uh, we're talking Peter Gabriel Genesis, yeah. not Phil Collins Genesis later. Mm-hmm. And 
enough to where we thought that guy was weird because he really like liked it. the band Genesis. Yeah. And now that's really liking a thing yeah. is both not weird and it is like does it is like desired. It is like a transactional synergy. Yeah. Um it's it's it, uh, it, it's weird. I th I think um I mean, I'm I'm not I, I yeah like I said I'm not worried about like people becoming too weird, but I think that there is a lot of scrutiny and a lot of pressure. Gate, maybe a little bit of gatekeeping too. You're not weird enough, or no, I don't. I I I wouldn't say that it's like an external pressure. Okay. Or or like an explicit pressure rather. I think that uh, the, the, there's another similar trend. God, I would love to find out where I found this. I must. I might have seen it on TikTok because I'm about to say TikTok again, but um. <laughs> But people who become popular on TikTok, they they end up become like getting in on on a rut. They have, they become mm -hmm. that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, uh, I found these two guys on TikTok a, a couple weeks, a couple months ago, and they had had a a video go viral of like uh, uh, things things guy things the guys do that are cringe or something. And okay. it was like, and it, it was. It wasn't. It it was like weird, very specific things. It wasn't. It, I I feel like it was very uh, accessible because it wasn't just like men be leaving the seat up. Like it was really weird, specific things that you wouldn't probably ding someone on their masculinity on. Yeah. In, in any case, so but they, but they had one of those videos go up, get get popular, and then suddenly like they just making more of those and they're fun and they're funny and you know they're just a couple of guys doing it themselves but uh you get you get stuck in that right yeah because then and then when they try to do something different oh well here's uh you know here's 10 things that that women do that are that are cringe and it's like oh okay oh, that's you like can. i don't even think and i'm not even like a it's not like, like a sensitivity thing either it's just like this is a different style of comedy that doesn't really play the same yeah, and so, and I don't know what you do about that because the phenomenon I'm describing is not anybody's explicit actions. It's them being stuck into a box, being right. typecast. Yeah, and me as a consumer, typecasting them very quickly, typecasting um, viral, viral uh, people, viral personalities. Yeah, I mean it's easy to put it's it's truly easy to put people in boxes especially when it's something you go i like that i want more of that thing right i like you doing that thing i mean that happened with me with voice acting there's like oh we you're the hero that dies and mm. uh, teaches the guy the, the who's actually the hero yeah. like that was the character and i was like oh i realize i played that nine times yeah yeah <laughs> um and and this is this is also like not a new phenomenon, right? Being typecast in in acting in yeah. theater, um, very common culturally even. So I uh, I'm not saying that this is necessarily new, but it no, is a just something you noticed. It is a, a a new way that it's happening. Yeah. Um, and the speed at which it's happening, the speed at which things like become cringe, right? It, it, I'm I'm surprised AI hasn't like hit a cringiness level yet. Yeah, I guess because it is it is just that useful. But I don't know things. It, the fads fads hit a lot harder now. I guess is the feeling. I wish. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's me wishing. Yeah. I no, wish no, no, no. that oh, people. I'm the wish fairy. Yes, and in the wish fairy. No, I'm the wish fairy. That people. Okay. Yeah. That uh, that people create things. Mm -hmm. Because they just want to create them and they enjoy them. And not because they're trying to do something. And I know why they do it, but like not not do it just to try to get the audience or get the thing. That was mm -hmm. something that my whole career that I've always thought. It's like, I want to do this thing because I enjoy doing it. Not because I want to have fans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I know that's different for other people. Sure. But that's also what's been great about EK's work. Is that we've made sure to stay. Do it because you. This is the story you want to see, yeah. not because you, you think everybody else wants to see that story. Yeah. That is um, that that is like a really interesting personality trait I find. Of uh, you, you see entrepreneurial people 
people who like have have a sense for like business or systems whatever and um and and the uh the way that we like position entrepreneurs now especially with media and so and and, and social media mm-hmm. is like you it it is easier it is it is easy and there are still avenues for people to be like that to say i want to have a million fans i want to i am very like kpm or, or mm-hmm. oriented um and that does have its have it have a very functional place but it is also a different thing when what you are starting from is a place of inspiration right of um i of i want to get this story out. i i definitely see the need for both mm-hmm. because there are some that look for new things to happen Pay people rent, like people show. have to take that chance, but also like uh, uh, Weird Dummy mm-hmm. uh, says, typecasting pays the rent. Pays it definitely rent. does. But there seems to often become come to that point where you're like, like for me, I have a full time job, and and so I don't necessarily need to get the rent paid from the creative thing that I'm doing. So right. therefore, I can afford to do the thing that feels good to me instead of being well. I know I can play that. I'll just get paid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I wonder if we'll look, I, I always like, I, sometimes I get into the high thoughts mode. Sure. Of like how will we look back on, on society in 300 years? Disdain. No. <laughs> well, because I saw there's a, there's a guy I like on TikTok who does, uh, he does clips about like, uh, uh, historical moments and current issues but he they're a little jokey they're very like meany right he's he's uh yeah i don't know it's 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 fun but um i lost it i it completely evaporated it's truly a high thought this, it was so high and just <laughs> oh yes okay there we go perfect just, just went away back. back so he he had one and we're back and we're back he had one about um uh, that I saw today about like ah oh, the ancient Romans writing about their life ah oh, today I met diastases today <laughs> should I tell people who diastases was no they will all know who diastases exactly was. yeah and then we never know who or what that thing or person is ever he was so diastases I tell so you. he was peak diastases <laughs> as you all know of course of course <laughs> and uh that's uh, you know what uh, uh uh damascus steel mm-hmm. is named in a similar way we don't really know if damascus was a guy or the name of a technique or it was developed or in that town if it was in it from the town the right. folding the folding of two different types of metal and you get that like a uh, that, uh, that really ugly texture you hate uh, it it's ugly it's the worst and then i, I will i won't show you my knives the next time you're over <laughs> that sounds like you're gonna i'm gonna and show you my I'm knives sure. i've got to steal let me show you my knives oh. <laughs> wait now it's oh. getting now it's going a different way oh, is, that a, is that damascus or are you just happy oh. to see me oh that's oh it's wavy and so i wonder <laughs> like what uh what information from today is going to be lost mm-hmm. in 300 500 years right things like um things like stories very yeah. ephemeral um posts are likely mostly gone, right? There's generally going to be a cache of them somewhere, and at any given point, I'm sure Facebook holds on to shit like that. But in general, th- those things, a lot of stuff on TikTok is going to be like fucking digital archaeology. Yeah, because uh, we don't. There's no. I, I've said this before. There's no public facing metadata really on TikTok. Right. If you use a hashtag, maybe that helps. But a lot of it is like its own algorithm and using comments and big data. Yeah, but that stuff would be more likely be on YouTube than it would be on TikTok, right? I mean, if we're talking, if we're just talking about any data. Okay. I mean, really, just any, you know, a lot of stuff on TikTok is not on YouTube. Yeah. I I have I have found I found myself in the weird place many times 
especially the past couple of years with TikTok, <laughs> TikTok memes, where I go, I don't know what the fuck this is. And I try to Google it, and Google doesn't know what it is because it happened 20 minutes ago. Right. And so then you get like, oh, does No My Meme know what it is? Does BuzzFeed right. know what a phantom tax is? <laughs> and uh uh, and so I, I think there's a, a good bit of that that will uh, that will actually get lost in in time. Um, yeah, you know, vines. I think someone's got a hard drive of all the vines out there, but uh, internet. Uh, uh, what is it? The internet wayback machine or something like yeah, that? Yeah, the internet archive. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. I wonder. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, just, I just. I, I don't know. You know, um, like. You know the YouTube videos that we do. We don't normally do like a big like credit roll or an end roll right. on most videos. So you don't know who's actually involved with that. Well, we or it's or, possible. Well, we we put it like sometimes we'll put that in the description or in in show notes if there's show notes and things. Um, but again, if we're talking about like uncovering this data. Would 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 you know? Maybe 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 not. I, like we have a wiki for a lot of Diamond Club stuff, but that's also a little a, a little lower activity lately. So you know, I don't know. It's, Do you um, think that that uh, something that uh, updating the wiki the wiki site would be a net positive? Maybe it's not for something immediate, but it could be for you know. Hey, there might be a future where people are going to want to see that. So you don't worry about whether there's a lot of traffic to it, but it's sure. still something. Well, it's a, it's yeah, it's it's fan run. The DCTVpedia, I think it's done by it is. DCTVpedia.com. but it's it's you know it's fan it's fan run and it's been slower lately uh, over the past few years. Just people come and go and yeah, people's interest comes and goes, especially in like running wikis. Now that like running anything other than Wikipedia is like de facto. Um, wikia or yeah. de facto curse or whatever they are, yeah. you know, which is just the fucking worst thing on the planet. Just the most like hostile takeover of information yeah. on the society like ever probably. Like um, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to damn them too soon, but it's kind of like fuck them. Kind of fuck everything that's happened with wikia and did, fandom. Did we talk? We talked previously about how how I was. Saying I've got my website, brewevervoice.com, hmm. and I don't get a lot of traffic there. I'm not. I'm not asking for traffic. I mean, cool if you do, mm -hmm. but uh, there is definitely the thought of going. Huh. I originally I had set it up just to say this is the stuff that I've done, and also here's some connection to some media that I've created. But then it's like, do we even still need something like that, or? E uh, I would say yes. Okay. In fact, one of the things that I had thought about years ago and like kicked myself for not having made and like built up the habit of is like keeping like a big uh, spreadsheet of like all of the episodes I've edited yeah. or all of the because it's been fucking hundreds, hundreds or thousands sure. of, of, of of episodes at this point. Um, and so that would be neat. That would be would be something that I would like to go back and say, like, okay, you know, if I had this all organized in a certain way, maybe there's a way I could do something with this data, or, right? Or just have it, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. No, no, no. Do you do you feel that way? I guess with like IMDb, like IMDb does that for a certain level of uh, media. yeah, it does. But uh, lately, there's been a lot of I'm uh, I'm not connected to certain projects oh, that like you should I, be. No, it, no, I am connected to projects that I shouldn't be. Oh, okay. so like there was a whole thing to this uh, a game that I did called. Um, um, secret neighbor, the neighbor, the neighbor Se thing. Yeah, the yeah. secret neighbor, and and uh, yeah, I've gotten even though they tell me my voice isn't on there, more of them have been showing up as I'm credited as for it. Of wow. course, I'm going. Maybe I should play a couple of those games just to make sure that that's not my voice that's on there. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe it is. Yeah, like does it is it happening because they 
cast they recast that character i don't or, know you need to play the game and yeah. figure out what the neighbor yeah. thing is going because, on with. because my they're secret neighboring you because the character is mostly grunts and growls and you know he, oh, yeah. he's the bad guy <laughs> that's <laughs> mr peterson <laughs> and uh uh and they were very happy but <laughs> they didn't cast me i ended up not getting cast in the in the the the, the animated sequel. series that, oh, that, that they're right. trying to do. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Buddy. Yeah, well, I mean, it was it was a weird situation because yeah. they you, you know you should make the Weaver dub, the yeah. Weaver's cut. Well, we tried that. I did that on another show. Oh, so. oh never mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a whole thing where I uh, there's a show called um, Gurren Lagann. Gurren Lagann, yeah. Which I did the original version mm. of it before it went over to to. California, and so yeah. uh, w actually DVDs were pressed. Oh, really? And, and and sent out. Is it like a rare find now? It's a very rare find. Oh. Uh, uh, in fact, the last time Brent, rare find, a Weaver. rare find Re Weaver. That's yeah. a rare find. Yeah, uh, uh, and that was a, such a great show. Uh, uh, pierce the sky, pierce the sky, all that sort of stuff. Uh, don't believe in yourself. Believe, believe in, me. in me. That believes in believe you. In you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, I was Kamina, uh, Kamina on Gurren on Gurren Lagann. Okay, yeah, and uh, and uh, but but it was only the first four episodes. Four episodes. Yeah, yeah. That's good. You want to be a character that dies out. And once again, he dies. And to to inspire the Simone, younger generation, who ends up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the fourth time I did play that character. By that point. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> do, how do you do, would you? Would you bemoan that? We're going to play Would You Rather later today. Okay. I've got a Would You Rather for you. Okay. You are typecast. Yes. But you are cast regularly. It's cha-ching, baby. Sure. Or Brett, voice whatever you want. You got. You see a show coming up. You see a thing. It's yours. I want that. You want that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there was a time uh, in the what beginning. Might it be? Uh, uh, when what's, what's Brett's dr like? I'm not gonna hold you to this, but like, what would be like a dream role? Would it be like a a major motion picture? Would it be like a t like a, a an international TV series? See, and there's different reasons for doing certain things. Sure, like being in a long running series uh, is great because you get paid, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, but as long as the characters are interesting. Yeah, and alive. And I did, and I've done long. I'm on one of the longest running shows, which was uh, One Piece. Mm -hmm. But I'm the bad guy in them, so they die, and yeah. the the good guys live forever. Yeah, but people people remember the people. They don't care about the characters who live. Yeah, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm a I'm a Luffy. Oh, I'm a yeah, I'm a Sanji. Sure, but then. The character of the week, the monster of the week, that's mm -hmm. a spice. That's how people know the episodes. So that's maybe true. you died, but when the character dies, that's that's a big moment. Well, and that's the thing of playing the characters that I've played is I get to leave it all on the floor. When I'm done, like I I don't have to I don't have to hold back yeah. in playing these characters. So I can play them as big or as interesting or whatever. As I want, because they're going to be gone soon. Yeah, and so I'm going to make sure this. Is, and yeah. I can tell you, there's so many characters. People are like, "Damn, dude, that was an awesome character." So yeah, but if you think watching that for eight years as that character, he'd get annoying after a while. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you know, there was a you know the new Rick and Morty season is back. Yes, and they've got the new voices. Have you listened to it? I have. What do you think? I think that the new voice talent is very good. Okay. Um, I also think that these first two episodes that they've picked, I think, very conspicuously, have been episodes, have been scripts where there is not a lot of Rick or Morty. Interesting, because they're getting you reset. Basically. I think so. Like the first episode is very much like a, uh, uh, like a almost like a road trip, get the gang together mm -hmm. sort of thing. So it's a lot of fan favorite side characters, and so there's a lot of opportunities for those characters to speak and have dialogue with each other mm -hmm. instead of with Rick or Morty. But I think that the I think the voices are good. I, I wasn't a hundred percent sold in the first episode, but mm -hmm. the second episode that came out is is I, I feel like 
I don't even really notice them being different at this point. Oh, I just realized. You didn't realize? No, I realized oh. that I recorded this weekend. Oh. the my, my pickups for the character, and it looks like I was the last person to record. I think we're going to be ready to release this series. Oh, Called Dirty Pair, Dirty the Pear. original the original series of oh, Dirty Pair. Okay, and and uh, they're putting Pear out as in two or the fruit uh, uh, <laughs> and, and, as in two. Both of gotcha. them are they're, they're dirty, dirty angels. Dirty Pair. They're Dirty Pair of angels. Of angels. Yes. Of angels. Wait, they should be. They, that, they should that, be clear. They're, they're bounty that, hunters. That pair of doing angels. a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, and they got and they got they both got boobies. So Damn. Dirty Pairs. Yep. Okay. You didn't need to. They're lady there. angels that are dirty. Yep. And they're bounty hunters. Yep. And they've got Titans. And and I play okay. the cat character that flies the ship. Of course. Oh, we we yeah. Yeah, we, we talked about, about that. Those, well, yes. I did my pickups this weekend. Gotcha. They're done. He's gonna put out two episodes for people to to see before he finishes. Where, where doing could people them. find it? <sighs> I think on Funimation. I there think. We go. Keep an but eye on it's through, information. It's through uh, right stuff, and uh, we had such a good time. It was such that. a good time. Yeah. Dirty pair, dirty pair. Hey, dirty here's pair. a here's a clean pair that joined us, Justin Robert Young. Yeah, Hi, look at this guy. They don't know it's theater of the mind. Yep, yep. That's uh, that's why I'm being mind. very coy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> they don't know. They don't. It's know. It's like I'm looking through a time machine. Yep. A little uh, bit. But I've never really had a clean shaven look for long. No, but I. But you've seen, I've you've seen, glimpsed I've, my face before be as yes. clean, and it's so always no, been as the Here's young the weird thing, because people terms. always freak out when I shave my face, but I don't think that there's any doubt that I look significantly younger. Yes. And I'm getting, I'm getting to the age where that might be an asset in a way that I didn't really care about, like when I was 35 looking right. 25. Right. But when, I, when, I'm, when I'm knocking on 45, looking 35 would, would be good. Yeah. Hmm. I was I up until the last five years, I looked younger than my age. Yeah, and then I don't know. I mean, I think it's just getting older, but also shits happened over the last few years to where I have gotten grayer, and I'm like, oh, this is what's happening. Well, now. the gray, the gray has been a constant, constant. on some levels since yeah. my mid twenties. Yeah, now. I'm losing the war here. Like, <laughs> yeah. not, it's not, cool. Not, I think you you like have. I don't know. I feel like you wear it well. Without yeah. a doubt, the 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 people love it. Mm. Yes, I've gotten more comments about my gray hair than I ever got when I had jet black hair. Yeah, that right. was just a messy ragamuffin. <laughs> now I'm some sort of Final That's Fantasy character. Yeah, you know. That's what it is. Yeah, the 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 dark hair is the difference. Yep. Well, I think yeah. There's no gray on the face, so now the hair looks like highlights, which has always yeah. been the thing that people like the most about the hair is that it it has grayed. Like I have like this shock white thing yes. up front, mm -hmm. and then like the I think I've told this story before, but we were at Epcot, and uh, I was in the Germany restaurant, and a hairdresser came up and said she loved my hair, and. Uh, I was like, oh, that's great. I'm, I'm so glad. It's Ever since it started going gray, people complimented. And she's like, you don't dye it? And I was like, <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, and uh, she's that's... like, really? And I'm like, <laughs> check yes. it. And she literally was going through my roots what? Uh, uh, to like confirm. She's getting in there. That is, she got in there. That is so great. Uh, making people upset with your hair <laughs> is so great. I, I mean, look. <laughs> I look. I but with but when the beard is getting, especially when it's longer, yeah, then no one's like, oh yeah, the guy with the black and white beard also has black and white hair, right? Yeah, yeah. that that it looks less impressive. I think you need to like salt and pepper the eyebrows. Yeah, like you no, have really black now eyebrows with the, with the shock black eyebrows because those haven't gone at all. Right. Very expressive. Uh, they it definitely makes my hair look like I'm trying a thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You, you know, look like, like I'm, I'm doing a thing without a beard. Yeah, he looks like the guy who is uh, the the uh, there's an actor who's got like white hair. He was the the skinny guy. Moses. Yeah, he was like Moses. The um oh Steve Martin. No. Yeah. The, oh. <laughs> 
Santa Claus. Uh, uh, Galifianakis? Mm, <laughs> famous white-haired comedian, Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> Not Sam Richardson. No, he's... The other Sam that's black. You know, I know. Sam Watterson? Sam Watterson a little bit. Sam Watterson? Yeah, so when the robots come... I think I think that's what uh, I'm talking old about. Old Glory didn't Robot do, Insurance. Didn't he do Calvin and Hobbes? Who the fuck is Sam Watterson? No. no. Uh, that was Bill... Watterson. Bill Watterson did Calvin and Hobbes. Sam Watterson was Feels on. Like we're playing Calvin. He was on Law. This, he was on Law segment. and Order, right? Yeah. Okay. This is not a great photo. That's younger. We need a younger version of. We him. need a younger version of this. But Sam Sam Watterson. You're not helping. Me. Yeah, it's, it, this is you're a bad not photo. Wrong. You're not wrong. That, that, that yeah. feels like something I would age into. <laughs> it's a good. I want to say this. It's a good look. Yeah, it's a it's a good look. Yeah, a distinguished. Funny. We're not. Yeah, I don't want to get into some of the stuff yeah. we want to talk about during the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Yeah, uh, Mr. Brian of, Brushwood. Yay! As I live and breathe. Uh, yay. Okay. Or what up Elliot? with this rain? Am I right? <laughs> I'm loving it. Yeah. Yep. Ba da ba ba ba. It's raining now. Yep. Mm hmm. What if it, what if, what if all the rain belonged to me though? Mm hmm. Wouldn't that be better for all of us? Do you want that? Do you want to be the rain king? Rain king. Rain, rain king. You want to steal the rain. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I had all the rain, wouldn't that be so better stole for all the four the of us? You Are stole. you a villain in a children's movie? I'm just saying. What if there was only one way to get rain, and the three of you happen to be friends with that one way? I'm ba da ba ba ba. Brian stealing rain. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you can you get can you repeat this line for me? Nya ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. He, is. Uh, he doesn't doctor. do your bidding. <laughs> We're henchmen. <laughs> he did it. He did it enough. You're the comic relief you know henchman. Yep. You get hit I, at the I end of the scene. <laughs> so the they kids laugh. On them. <laughs> oh, uh, striped shirts. Boy, that was wild going to uh, 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 the former handlebar in its new face. We did. We went when was to that? On last Thursday, uh, we went to the speakeasy and then we went to what used to be the handlebar that we've done live shows and events at uh, back, in the, been shot there back in the, the South by Southwest. So it was closed forever. Mm -hmm. It's back. Oh, nice. Uh, it's, it's all redone. It's very, very nice. Uh, it's called the cock fight. Mm. Sure. And it is a reggaeton themed bar. Now I had not heard this word before. Okay. Reggae, you have reggae not. Tone. No. It is a very like specific genre that I feel like if you don't l strike out to l listen to what it is, you won't know what it is. Because I also turns out I had not struck out to find out what it was. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I don't know if it's a good idea <laughs> that they made it a reggaeton it's an idea. bar. It mm. is an idea. Sure, I've been there a few times. Mm -hmm. Because the speakeasy, uh, uh, if you catch it at the right time, fantastic. If you mm -hmm. catch it at the wrong time, shit fucking show. awful. It's yeah. an absolute shit show. It fits seven people and they have ten chairs. And to be totally honest with you, as much as I love the speakeasy, if you ain't got time and the bartender's undivided attention, I would, especially when the weather's good, a thousand times out of a thousand rather be at the handlebar. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that the cockfight, as redesigned as it is, because it does nothing but play reggaeton music, it is either attracting people who remember the handlebar, right, <laughs> or Mexican teens. Yeah, they love reggaeton. It's pretty much, or or like if, because you got to think, it's right there on Sixth Street. Yeah, right it's right next to the hotel. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not like on Dirty Six, so it is like so it's a kind of off, a nice, but also, spot. but it, but it's right next to so many hotels. You don't think anybody who's here for a conference is like, Doug, do you hear Daddy Yankee? <laughs> we should go to that bar. What's it called? Is, yeah, is, is that a Spanish cover of Creep? Yeah, <laughs> <What's> <laughs> which we definitely it? heard. Yeah, really, we heard yes. a Spanish wow. version of oh, Creep. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Creepo. Is that is that Bad Bunny? <laughs> <laughs> I love Benito. Let's go in there, Johnson. J Balvin. <laughs> uh, so, yeah we, yeah, we went there and found out that Bonnie Brushwood, oh my God, is a fucking professional cornhole player. Uh, 
things we know about Bonnie Brushwood. Mm -hmm. Number one, has one eye. Yeah, okay. sure. Does not experience the universe in 3D. No. Yeah, right. Okay. right. Things we know about cornhole. You throw it, you get Probably momentum, you thing. hit the thing, it slides. If you're very lucky, it goes in the hole. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yep. The way you don't play cornhole is making three-point shots <laughs> right. from half court. Playing battleship style. Sure. Definitely can't do that. One-eyed woman is sinking Half court crushing shots, it. and Just I will say, great. How, so you, you, what, you, you would be the authority on this, mm. but in the world of Bonnie Brushwood, in the modern Bonnie Brushwood world, this was Bonnie drunk. She does not yes. drink like she, she was she drinking was, on Thursday was, nights she was often. Yeah, yeah, no, mm. like I, I, she had had some duff beers. Now for us, that made us worse cornhole players. Correct for. Bonnie for Dead Eye Brushwood gave her a supernatural gift. Ba, ba, sure. ba, ba. Yeah. Crush it. Now was this was this regulation distance on cornhole? Because I know that I know that the handlebar that 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 space is a little tight. It, it went the entire length of the end of that patty. Oh really? I'm okay. Pretty certain yeah. you could take those exact two cornhole receptacles mm -hmm. and put one at the back of the seven acres and one here. And she'd still and would hit it. Yeah. be sinking them like free throws. But but but, but uh, no. uh, uh, enhanced by alcohol. No, I think, think no, no, I think that was a a. She's that good. She overcame the fact that she was drunk. Okay, I that's wow. what I think. Despite the fact that she is unable to judge distance on account of having one eye. Right. I think she's tapping into a spiritual energy. I think. I think the ghost of Air Bud is Corn helping her out. I don't know. I think it might make her better, the one eye. Yeah? Yeah. Because when, I, when I've been very drunk Because you need to close playing, the other eye. Yeah, because right. when I've been very drunk playing beer pong sometimes, it helps to close one eye. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would shoot better. <laughs> but I feel like that's that's her life. She was just, yeah. She's just born in that. Well, not born in it. The but, sense, but she's, no, yeah, she's no, been molded. Specifically not born that way. everything in my being to not call her right now. But that's fine. Do you think she's better or worse at cornhole because she only has vision in one eye? We could ask her. You call her, yeah. All right. All right. Call her right now. Uh, five minutes. Sure. Thank you, Five. Call Bonnie Brushwood. No, you call her. No, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know who I'm asking. It's like a fucking 1950s <laughs> comedy duo. Hello. Bonnie, you're live on the internet. Uh, look. Oh, what's up? Are, are you better at cornhole because you have one eye or or no? <laughs> well, you see, because I have only one eye, I have to tap into how it feels to throw the cornhole. See, that... It's more of a feel thing. Yeah. This was my theory. So then, Is yes. Yes, theory? yes, you have an advantage. Well, I mean... An advantage at life or an advantage at cornhole? An advantage at court? No, obviously it's a disadvantage at life. But but I, 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 my suspicion was, and I would only say this because every once in a while when I was very drunk and I was playing beer pong, I would close one eye and I would shoot better because there'd be less... <laughs> Uh, uh, less less motion, and that's just like your that's just your 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 existence. You you are so used to it, and and there's no denying you slayed everybody when we were playing cornhole. Well, and, and oh my God. it was a beautiful thing. It was it was magnificent. <laughs> and specifically, like cornhole is meant to be played where landed on the pad. Hopefully, it slides into the hole. But you weren't doing that. You were just nothing but net. Uh, bop, uh, bop, uh, bop. Three point shots. Oh my God, my favorite is the first time I did that. It just swished in and you guys both startle and then you have to look in to make sure it was actually in there because you Go just look in the hole. believe it. Like first you looked on the other side, surely that didn't make it in. Well, like, look Bonnie, I, I also, and I don't know whether or not I'm just inventing this because it makes the story better, but I feel like there was this totally genuine level of amazed bemusement of you saying like wait that's not supposed to happen oh <laughs> that sounds like me but Bon <laughs> bonnie i would love i would love to explore the space on this and have you 
play cornhole again, and then I have you step one step back and see if that continues to hit it or if it's like... he's uh, No, this is, you know, when you find somebody talented and now you're torturing them to see exactly how powerful... Brian was stealing rain as a as a kid's that's movie true. villain. Right now, okay. you've become the new kid's movie villain. Uh. Bonnie, run free. You can play <laughs> cornhole however you want. Yep. Hooray, Bonnie. Bye. Bye, Bonnie. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm convinced uh, we could put the, I think it's like Portal, like we could put the other cornhole on the moon, and all she has to do is throw, throw it, it, and then and it goes, it's on the moon. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Let's fill it uh, with plutonium. Boom. ICU says Bonnie is a hustler. I would love a, 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 a cornhole hustling movie starring Bonnie. We already pitched in our pre-show meeting, White Woman Can't Throw. Yep. That's true. I've been yeah. told that I should not try to give her the yips. Thank you. Thank you for, for that. Uh, what are the yips? The yips are when you're when, when you're in your own head. Oh, yeah, can't got it, got it. Yep. a thing that you were really good at. Yeah, you now can't. Well, do. yeah. Uh, to be honest, I think I think that everybody else was in the yips, yips. except for Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie was like, I don't know what you guys are crying about. Blap, flop, flump. <laughs> Oakley was throwing rocks too. Yeah, no, no, no. But, yeah. but Bonnie was unfazed. She's mm -hmm. like. Uh, uh, Steamed hams, more like uh, oh, uh, yeah. hard slams. Exactly. Mm. Just casually mention Oakley. I should have said Bill. I should have not even done Billy it. Boy. I, I should have just said like, yeah, Bill was having a good time too. Yeah, this well, we're gonna talk Arlington's Bill. Arnold. No, are, are we? Are we, gonna talk are we to doing it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's in the. Okay. Right. Is it in the thing? Mm -hmm. All right. Shave no, off your beard. Uh, it's not in the thing. Oh, it's okay. not in the thing. Oh, okay. We're best friends with Bill Oakley. Anyway, we're yeah. hanging out with Bill Oakley. <laughs> Bill Oakley was there during Met Story. I didn't get to hang out with Bill Oakley. You did. But... No. But I did. But he's And a... from my perspective, that's better. Yep. It's really weird. Now you're the now you're the villain. <laughs> oh, I'm just a garden variety <laughs> asshole. <laughs> was it as weird for you as it was for me to be like two hours into the event and you get just far enough to just hanging out with your friend Bill that it becomes weird when he says, Yeah, like when I wrote for the Harvard uh, Lampoon. Wow. And you're like, what? <laughs> like, like, I kept forgetting. Well, that was during a question of we were uh, like asking about his career. Yeah. So that did not shock me. Okay. But it also explained how he goes at that young to work at The Simpsons. Yeah. Because there are a lot of Lampoon people at The Simpsons. Yeah. It we, makes sense. We argued for about 30 minutes about what a, a Mad Magazine Docu uh, docudrama should look like a docu. Oh, I mean about the making of yes. Mad yeah. Magazine. Yeah. yeah, we should. I mean, and stop you know, talking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was we gonna should say, stop talking. Yeah. We're gonna do that. Yeah. Hey, or Bryce, we'll shoot this dog. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We Wait, should stop talking, Bryce. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Which was based on. Not talking. The Daily Worker. <laughs> hey, Bryce. Hi. Hi. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Clem Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is the worst. The worst <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. This has been the Green Room. Great room. A whole dang thing. Still Bryce Castillo. Still here escorting you in and out of this room we call green. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It is October. 24th. That's right. It's October 24th, 2023. Let's take a look at the birthday borners in our Discord. Discord.greatnight.tv is where you can go check out the birthday borner channel at the top of the channel list. Uh, let's see here. We had uh, Dr. Uncle Mel celebrating their 22nd birthday. Happy birthday, Dr. Uncle Mel. I'm sure that's that great number. Uh, if you want to get your birthday borner shouted out in the birthday borner, go to the birthday borner channel. Tell us about a birthday. We need a borner. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We got uh, we got a great show for you coming up in a bit. But uh, in the meantime, you want to talk about some fast cars, some speedy cars over the weekend. It was the proper United Stra Straits. <laughs> More like a United Straits. Uh, the United States Grand Prix here in Austin, Texas, the Circuit of the Americas. And uh, w uh, w would you know it? Max Verstappen won. I don't know if you could believe it. Uh, uh, Max Verstappen uh, won another uh, won another fucking race. Wait, uh, yes, is, caller. Uh, hi, first time, long time. Thanks. When I hear about these athletes winning, uh -huh. I think to myself, 
Is it because they figured out how to put the pedal all the way to the metal? Is that why they win? Well, well, it's it's. it's or is it because they just want it more? Well, and thank you for your thank you for your question. You know, it's a little bit of both, right? The amount of throttle that you put affects how much uh, how much how much throttle you put into it. But uh, if you if you if you if you put too much of the loud pedal, you're going to use up all your fuel. Then you're not going to have any fuel. What are you going to drive with? Your feet? Not feet Ooh, one. Actually, actually, it's not feet one. Uh, uh, dropping the character for a moment. Is fuel efficiency one of the factors? Like, like because you want to minimize the number of pit stops for refueling, there, is, is is that really part of the game? There, there is no refueling anymore. There hasn't been refueling in Formula One for I want to say fifteen or twenty years. Um, but you can control your miles per gallon, but like I'm saying, by by how much uh, how much throttle you put in. So especially on the straights uh, uh, near the end of the the straightaway. Um, that is where you decide really how much how much power you want to put in because if you think if it's it's similar to your car right you can either you can coast with, and it makes your miles per gallon meter crank up because you're running on basically nothing um, but then you're going slower because your car is coasting it's not propelling itself forward so so uh, and then braking cuts into that right if if you put if you use more fuel then you do need to brake more but then you've used up that fuel you haven't made that fuel as efficient so it, it is a real running concern. On, on, on top of that, is there ever a moment that they have to swap out brakes? Like, do you destroy the brakes or? No, not not during a race. They can, they do catch fire a lot though. Um, when when the car, and funny enough, when the cars stop, uh, the, those brakes are designed that they need all of the wind of uh, uh, of of the, uh, uh, the being being pushed through the air from the car. That when the car stops moving, it doesn't get enough air. And it, it it catches fire. Have, has there been a Reddit thread like speculating what it would be like to have a high end EV uh, participate in F one and 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 who would win and why? Mm, well, there is there is Formula E, which is its own all electric series, um, and because of the legalities and weirdness of it, they're the only one allowed to be the they're the one they're they have like the exclusive rights to be the only electric vehicle uh racing series so that's kind of a bummer for f1 uh, in the fia uh uh motorsport organization yeah so yeah so like has anybody like you know duct tape a smoke bomb to the back of an ev and pretended to be a combustion vehicle <laughs> yeah i think so i think they catch that the, the way that i've understood electric uh, uh vehicles is that you can go faster with a battery than you can a combustion motor. Mm -hmm. the, you you the, can accelerate faster, you for can. sure. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, the problem is creating a device that can sustain the kind of pressure that like an F1 car does. That is something that has not been perfected on the same level. So the because e the, battery, the batteries are super heavy. Like that's the big change between Formula One and Formula E is that those cars are wicked heavy because up until very recently, they weren't allowed to recharge either. So, so, so as of now, an balance. EV is, mm, if it was dropped in the middle of an F1 competition, would not be able to compete. Now, if if uh, they no. were able to swap batteries. Well, number one, they couldn't have the same cars, right? But, but that's like the point of F1 is they all have the same basic idea and then they're, they're adjusting it a little, accordingly, yeah. right? Like Aerodynamics and... Uh, setups and stuff yeah so it's like let's say they had that and as bryce was saying they're not able to drop new batteries in they're not able to hot swap batteries currently which is why the batteries have to be fucking heavy yeah uh so i don't know i mean i think that it would yeah. be uh, weirdly the thing that would get people into electric car racing would be being more dangerous than <laughs> f1 or nascar just gonna uh, throw this one out there uh, imagine you, you get to the point where you need a pit stop. Instead of actually pulling into the pit, you just let your car crash into a wall, but you hit the eject button and it springs you out. Yeah. You pull the parachute and you parachute into a brand new ready to go car and off you go. I feel like this is, you are explaining to me something that I think is a actual hit. Real life wacky racing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
we should have a bunch of people from reality shows and politics and athletics go on a cross country race where they are constantly swapping cars and teams and uh, near to wells are throwing oil slicks in front of them. I'm into it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the um, one of the things Formula E is trying to work on is to add in recharging. Uh, I saw this today. They're going to try out. They're going to trial. 30 second attack charges uh, during some races where uh, uh, the, the the batteries will get uh, recharged for a little bit and they have a minimum pit stop time. Um, so they have to charge or be stopped for a certain amount of time. Um, so that, that, that'll that be interesting because uh, with, with the Formula E and the electric vehicles, because they don't use a liquid fuel, the cars, uh, battery electric cars don't get lighter as you drive them. Where uh, for the Formula One, they uh, they get they get lighter the further you go. Can I ask you a question, Bryce? With yes. the Austin race, the only headline that I really saw was that people were upset that the track was shit. Is that true? It was a it's bumpy. Yeah, it's a bumpy track, but people know it's a bumpy track. Um, so that's just whiners. Uh, whiners whining like a big pile of whiners. Yeah, they're real. They're just me, little babies. I pissed my diaper. That's what they're saying, basically. That's exactly I what they're saying. Got gotcha. you. I pissed my diaper. I am a whiner. And uh, uh, like part of it is because two racers. I got my humps. <laughs> okay, I saw you were still Brian, dancing a little bit. Drafting so the so new so. theme song for next year's <laughs> Circuit of the Americas. Uh, but uh, two two racers were disqualified after the race because. Their car basically hit the ground, skidded too much, um, and was was deemed unsafe. And so, too, oh, too so high performing. Oh, so that's perform- why people are pissed off is because you have shit like that happen. Because you had the guy in second place and the guy in fifth or sixth who got disqualified. And so, uh, it was a little. And they're like, Meh, these uh, American roads, uh, I don't like them. Too many uh, breakfast tacos. <laughs> I'm an F1 racer. I race at a car. Is, vroom, vroom. Is that what and we're doing? And now I'm a disqualifier. Why are you disqualifying me? Is, is that what we're doing now? Is is disqualifying people because it's unsafe? It's like, 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 like a box. Rules, they stay rules, like, unsafe. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys are punching each other in the face. No, it's not unsafe. I drive at a car. Yes. Hands on the wheel. Ten yes. and two. Okay. Go fast. Very fast. So sometimes the car goes a little low. I scrape. I scrape. You scrape. We all scrape here and again. When in life as we are not scraped, we do it together. Come on. Yeah. This accent is slipping. <laughs> it was. Becoming a-, a little bit more Middle Eastern. <laughs> 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 I don't know why we do that. <laughs> One of the drivers was a Ferrari driver too. Um, okay, well let's uh, get ready for the show. Thank you for the, for some critical <laughs> racing. Like Formula Fun. Ah, oh, there you go. So fun. So Formula Fun. All right, let's uh, check how everyone's doing. Uh, Justin, you ready to do hey, the show? Hey. Brian. Yeah. Annalisa. Yes. Brett. Hello, friend. Ooh. Not to mention our chat in the beautiful study audience. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's going to do it here for the pre show Great Night Green Room. Whole dang things. For, get us on Patreon, patreon.com slash great night. Of course, you know the whole dang thing. Let's cart the show. Let's cart the show, Brett. Okay, let's cart it. Let's cart it. I'll count you in. Okay. In Carta, Microsoft, in Carta, in. 